I've been threatening to do this video now for quite a while, but since there is no real result coming from the Italian FA, they just postponed it. Let's let me rant and let's leave uh, the result of Juve Napoli open. Uh, I've also been going back and forth. Shall I rant at the beginning or at the end? And I usually do it um, chronologically as things happen. Then we had a midweek games, so that I will do it this way. Wearing Milan for the simple reason I want to actually keep all the teams up. So it's either Rome and Milan and Milan did better. And you know, it's Maldini's last home jersey and Maldini is doing a decently well job uh, in building up a new, a new team. They didn't get Chiesa, uh, which I'm a little bit sorry, but you know, um, I think the team is cool enough and Let's see where it goes. So let's look at the midweek games because actually there were quite the results. Uh, less so the... No, actually, <laughs> there were quite the results uh, all over the place. Uh, it, start, it started at 6 o'clock. There were two games. Um, Benevento, who had this great win uh, at Sampdoria, gets annihilated by Inter. I mean, it was within 28 minutes. Inter was three goals up and it was Hakimi that uh, assisted Lukaku already for the first goal. Then Gagliardini gets one assist by Jan Gagliardini, then assists Lukaku. And you could see this is Inter at its very best. And its very best, I think Inter is a really, really exciting team to watch. Who already scored a few, a couple against um, some, some, some Dora pulls from back, but then Hakimi gets his goal. And I think this Hakimi signing will play huge dividends for Inter. I think it's more the question whether Conte can really contain them and how will they respond to adversity. But this is a squad really built to win now. Uh, probably even the deepest squad in the league with a very experienced coach. So for that reason, you got to say Inter has to be considered a uh, favorite. Martinez and Cabrari add two more in the second half, but it is uh, a clear victory for Inter to get them off. Uh, Spezia with a surprise victory over Udine. And then in the evening, I watched the Champions League playoffs and I had Lazio Atalanta on, on the other screen. And I have to say Lazio and At At Atalanta is so much fun to watch. They continued where they left on off against Torino. Almost every shot a goal and going for it. I mean, Lazio was completely overrun by them. And Golsons very early on gets already the first goal. Um, then he assists with a nice cross. Hattepoint. This is a very similar goal that we have seen already against Tor 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 Torino, where it goes from one side to, to the other. Uh, guys free can pull it into the net. And then uh, Papo Gomez. It's another one, and it seemingly he says, Okay, now it's time for me to get on the score sheet. Here I am, here I score. He, absolutely, and he is the soul of this team. If Atalanta can stay healthy, I think they will probably be the biggest challenger to uh, Inter. Still not 100% about Juve this season. I mean, by all rights, the shoes should have been there, but if Atalanta keeps playing this way, uh, there will be few teams that will be able to stop them. I have to say, after the half, first half it was all Atalanta. After the half, I think there was like a roughly a 15-minute period where um, Lazio really tried to come back. And I, I remember there was a game last, last season. Was, was it Atalanta was 3-0 up and then Lazio pulled 3-3? Three, three, or was it the other way around? So, something like it. It happened before. So in a way, Lazio thought, yeah, we have them exactly where we want them. And Caicedo gets the goal, although before that, um, Immobile should have made one. Um, and when Caicedo got, gets it from a, a cute angle, I don't know, Immobile was thereafter. Sure, should have, should have gotten that, that, that one. Um, but Atalanta really just needed this last back. No, no, you're not come coming back. Malinowski to Gomez, and Gomez just picks up the uh, upper right corner. That guy. That guy, I know two or three year, 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 years ago, I thought about Atalanta being just this pesky team. Meanwhile, I'm fully invested in them. They are so much fun. Uh, it's unbelievable. And yeah, so this ends kind of the mid, uh, ended the midweek round. And all that meant is that um, 
since we did the World Makeup Games from round one, uh, that Atalanta and Inter went up and also Spezia got now a few, few points. So we had, a, uh, for the first time, a more even picture. Also, goal scoring really, really up 3.6. I mean, not as high as the Premier League yet, but still quite amazing. So, uh, then on Friday, Fiorentina with a shock loss to Sampdoria. I didn't expect it, but... What I have to say is this was probably the most pleasing jersey matchup we'll see all season. I, if you see my um, Serie A jersey review, and I'm not sure if I did already Fiorentina and Sampdoria, I probably did. Uh, they have both teams some of the best jerseys out there by default. And then I think I really like Fiorentina's home and the Sampdoria away is one of the finest kids this season. Uh, really nice. Cagliarella with a penalty. Vlaovic pulls, pulls one back. Um, but then uh, a goal for Sampdoria is actually already disallowed for a handball and then Vere uh, scores the winner, which to me was surprising because Fiorentina was really well. It was also surprising to see Ribéry in the stands. The guy keeps getting injured. If he plays, he is wonderful. If he doesn't, doesn't look all that well. Uh, Sassuolo beats Crotone 4-1. Um, then Genoa Torino, and this is probably already part in the story. Last uh, weekend Genoa played at Napoli with and had now I think 13 or 14 something like a ridiculous number of Covid cases. So that game needed to be postponed because uh, so many uh, players did have Covid. So that game was postponed. But we'll talk about that uh, for Napoli. Udine Roma was a rather labored win by Roma. Um, I find Udine's home church is rather interesting. Um, but Pedro's goal to win it all was a beauty, but they had to really fight hard to hang on um, to get this win. Uh, more Atalanta talk. <laughs> Scoring freely. I mean, two and a half games played in Atalanta had already 12 goals. 12 goals! Uh, this time Muriel and Papo Gomez adds one, Pasalic, Zapata, Godin pulls one back, but you know. Kaleri uh, came out of the break uh, making it 4 4 4 4 4 2 and then late it was 5 uh, 2 for Atalanta, but the result was never in doubt. That team is just on a roll. It is unbelievable. Uh, so much fun. 13 goals in 3 games is an unbelievable rate. Also, uh, you will not see it in any of my review videos those yellow jerseys by Cagliari. I have not seen before. Adidas tem template will probably not get more than uh, five stars. Well, you know, yellow is a decent color uh, to use for for Norwegian. So Atalanta absolutely rolling. Benevento gets another win over Bologna, and then I saw Lazio Inter, which uh, at first when I saw Inter march out in the third jerseys, I thought. Why isn't Inter playing in the home jerseys? And then it kind of clicked. If they were wearing these jerseys for only one game, the Lazio game would be the one. Because they played Lazio in the 98 uh, UEFA Cup final, where they wore the inspiration for this jersey. So made total, total sense. I have to say, um, you know, I'm not a big fan of grey, but it, these jerseys are really fine and uh, it looked great on the field. Uh, the game, I think, uh, was more even, I mean, after Lazio got beaten by Atalanta so badly and Inter already scoring so many at Benevento, I knew that Lazio will try to keep this tight, but I really thought this will be an easy Inter win. No, absolutely not. I mean, yes, Martinez gets the first goal, but it was more out of, a little bit out, out of nowhere. It was kind of a tight uh, game that Lazio then actually dominated for uh, the first part of the second half and got also a little bit out of nowhere. I mean, it was, they had more control. It was, a, it, it, it was one of those finely balanced games where just a little bit can totally upset um, the, the balance. And, you know, Milinkovic, Savic's equalizer came a little bit out of nowhere, but then Lazio was pressing. Until Immobile gets sent, 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 sent off for a uh, bust up with Vidal, where basically Vidal feigns, uh, uh, fouled him, then wants him team to go and Immobile kicks him. Uh, stupid stuff like that uh, can upset the team. Then Inter was again the better team. Before that, I thought Lazio might, if there's a I minute, mean, will be Lazio. It was the more or less Inter and Inter tried, but didn't they really have all those great chances, I have to, I have to say. And 
uh, Lazio really tried to also get an interplay set off and they then uh, succeeded by, you know, Patrick did not cover himself in glory, but he got a sense of set off for unsportsmanlike counter, uh, conduct. Who was already, uh, or was he? No, he, 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 he was not yet on, on the yellow card, but it, it's one of those where you really knew that they wanted to get the red card and that in the 87th kind of settled the game for a, a draw. It was not a pretty game, but it was interesting to watch. Uh, Parma gets a win over Verona, was sorely needed for them. And then Milan with a rather, you know, yes, they had more of the game, yes, they were better, but it was not that, uh, that I expected the goal and will be by three. When Leao puts it in to the net after Cialanoglu cross, that, hope, that every, every, everyone in the Milan camps was whole hoping because it opens the floodgates. Didn't really necessarily open the floodgates, but it eased uh, the tension of Milan, who uh, then even could bring on some, uh, uh, you know, Tonali stars, so you can bring on Kessien and Benazir, so it was Tonali and Kronic in midfield, so you could uh, save a few because you had the big uh, game against um, Rio Ave, Hernandez then in typically Hernandez fashion scores the second and then Leao adds a third uh, and new signing Hauge also came on so I found that very interesting. And then we were all waiting whether Juve Napoli was happening and already before that we knew that on Saturday evening we told, I talked about the Napoli Gen 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 game we had two Nap Napoli players I think one of them was um, Rui Mario, uh, one, one, one of the, oh, no, no, Zielinski, Zielinski got it and the uh, Napoli team wanted to travel, but the uh, health authorities in Naples uh, decided, no, you guys are not traveling, we cannot let you leave, you go in quarantine. And the Italian FA, although knowing that, did not do anything, did not do a thing about it. They say, well, Napoli has only two COVID cases. Yes, they're in quarantine, but our statute said that um, you need to have, I think, if you have 13 players in the squad, you must play, otherwise the game is forfeit, which they have not made a decision yet. And so they started a normal broadcast. I mean, everyone knew there's nothing going to happen, but the Italian FA really went, or uh, uh, the league, Yes, I went through with it. I mean, you saw lineups from Juventus, you saw the big, uh, yeah, Matemal, it's the Gattuso against Pirlo showdown. You saw the players uh, in the pitch and then it said, awaiting away team, uh, or arrival of away team. And then, you know, they wait for for the family, the referees there, you, you is there, everything. And then the game is abandoned. Honestly, an absolute farce. And from many ways. A. I think what the Italian FA tried to do in the ruling is similar to what UEFA is doing, where they say if a team cannot show up because of COVID, uh, that was for the quali qualifying stage, uh, it will be 3-0. And I think this happened in one of the earlier qualification rounds. I understand their thinking because there's also not too many uh, slots now left. However, this is a championship. You can postpone games for a qualification knockout tournament. You cannot really do that. So that's my first point. The second point is the local health authority says they cannot travel. So pretending that they're not traveling is just crazy. You could postpone the January game, just listen to the health authority. Even the health minister said, soccer is not that important at the moment. Just do the sensible thing, call the game off for now. No, they're not doing that. And I really also have to uh, pick on Juventus here. Maybe they wanted to cover their bases, or maybe they just wanted to get easy three points. I mean, we know that Juventus does everything for a win. That the team is showing up and there's no one in the team. And there are many players that had COVID. I mean, just look at Dybala, who had, I think, uh, was three or four times the diagnosis with COVID. That no one there is saying, no, I'm not playing today because the team is not playing. You know, solidarity. No, nothing like that. I... The Italian FA is an absolute joke hiding behind rules, but I know this is in many ways the very Italian way. Um, 
you always think of the Italians as so less, less No, the Italians make many rules and everything, but it all gets very slowed down in the whole justice system. And you know, if there is a paragraph, and you saw it with the Roma, uh, Verona thing, uh, they come down and uh, Juventus is very much there. I mean, they rather side with the FA than with a fellow team. And I'm sure this has also to do some some, some of the north-south divide. Uh, and you know, with now Napoli being a uh, direct opponent, in a title race, uh, Napoli also all, also being a role. This would be a great time to hit on them. That's my spec regulation, but Juve being Juve, I would not pull it um, beyond them to do it like that. Absolute disgrace. And all the wonderful soccer, all the stories about Atalanta and so on. And I, maybe it was a good decision that I kept this now for late because that we can actually talk about the games that actually happened. But Everything is overshadowed by this absolute joke that happened on Sunday evening. There is a team that cannot travel, but the health authorities said, you cannot travel. You can surely find some way of making up this game. Some way. I mean, I don't condone what they're doing in England, where they had Spurs play three times within in a week, although Spurs did act, act, actually quite well. I mean, get a, a week where you have uh, four wins in eight days or some, something like that. But you can find a way. It is surely doable. And if Juventus or Napoli uh, crash out of Europe, European calm competition, yeah, suddenly some, some, something op opens up. Uh, it's just ridiculous, absolutely ri ridiculous. Uh, it also is ridiculous and, you know, speaks we have not this very stuffed calendar where there's nothing happening, but we have leagues of 20 teams. Go at least to 18 to give yourself a little bit breathing room. Yeah, that's a story for another video. Well, I'll end it here because I'm talking myself in, in, into a rage, but I find this absolute, absolute disgrace. Let me know what you think about that or any of the other games, you know, Atalanta, Milan, even Inter Lazio, there are lots of talk, talk talking about that we probably should spend more time time on. The Italian FA has hasn't decided whether they will award the game to Juventus or whether it will be postponed. I really hope they get postponement. I just I don't think so. I th I think it, uh, Juve will be awarded a three 0 win. Anyway, as I said, drop a line below, give me a thumbs up, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.